hands down our most popular video series is the one where I dug my own well. And I get questions all the time from people who want to install pitcher pumps on, on something similar, either for survivalist reasons or for yard ornament reasons or just because they want to water the garden and don't want to pay. I figured it'd be great to go ahead and look at a pitcher pump and examine how they work and maybe how to like tune one up. How can you get a little more performance out of a basic bottom end pump like this? This came from Northern Tools. It's less than $40. I think I even got free shipping on it. You're not going to find one cheaper than this. And I'll be honest with you. It shows rough sand castings. It's got some, some pits, nothing that seems to affect the actual working mechanicals of the pump. Unless you're willing to drop three, four hundred bucks, you're not going to get anything but this, whether it comes from Northern Hydraulics or it comes from some sort of outfitter or ranch and home. They're all going to be basically versions of this. Nicer, cleaner casting, sure, but basic versions of this. If you're willing to upgrade to some of the big German-made pumps, you're going to get a much nicer machine. If you're willing to upgrade to a sleeved pump, you're willing to get a much, much nicer machine. What if you have a cabin and you simply want to be able to pump and wash some dishes and water the dog. Well, this one will work fine for you. Even though it's rough casting, there's nothing that will keep it from mechanically functioning. What I read online in the reviews is that the rubber pump gaskets would invert. That the barrel of this pump was so rough that they would actually turn inside out cause them to cut themselves, at which point the pump either jams or it stops pumping. So I thought that we would, since that was such a common, common complaint, I thought it'd be really good to open this up. It'll give you a chance to see not only how they work, but also we can all look and see just how rough the inside of a Northern Tool pitcher pump actually is. So to get this apart, we have two bolts, 7 16 wrench. And then up here, we have a pin connecting the pump handle to the piston shaft. So far, very easy to get apart. Most times, these two are stuck together, so you might need to whack it with a, a block of wood. We'll see. Mine's gonna come right out. And it's gonna leave the piston shaft behind. Anyways, that looks okay. I mean, it looks like crap, but you know, they're, they're simple machines, so it's fine that they look like crap. All the machine surfaces are a little rough, but I bet they seal okay. If your pump drains back down inside the well, it is because this is no longer sealing. And what it uses is the weight of the water in the well casing to push that down. It's trying to suck it down, but it can't obviously go down, so that's what holds it down. If you need to replace this rubber flapper, this you could get, or rather make yourself one easy out of leather. You just take that bolt loose, trace to make a copy, and uh, a leather one would last a very, very long time. So what about their argument that the inside, let me pull the other handle off here. The inside of this is rough. Ooh, yeah, they're kind of right. Get a look in there. The thing you should know about a cast iron well pump like this is they are always going to rust and that rust inevitably will lead to pitting and that rough surface will inevitably destroy this. If it's used frequently, you're going to be okay. If you use it uh, once or, or twice a week, that would probably be enough. A few pumps to, to keep that out of there. If you're going to put your pump in long-term storage, say for a winter time, you can put a little bit of some food safe oil, say uh, an olive oil. Just dump a quarter cup down in there and then really fast pump your well up and down a few times. At which point you'll coat this in olive oil and provided you've drained it properly, um, it'll be okay for the winter. It's kind of got a lip right here, too. Definitely, they did some quick and dirty machining. But I think, I think there's a way we can make this better.
So I now have the pump clamped upside down. And I've got chucked into the drill an engine cylinder home. And these are used in motors to smooth the cylinder bores. And I don't see why we can't use it in here. Cast iron engine block, cast iron pump there. Normally these things run in oil. I don't want that kind of mess, so I'm going to go ahead and run it in water. So the idea uh, behind this is that these smooth out the imperfections in here. They clearly chuck this on a lathe and just stuffed a cutter down through it and left a very coarse, you can feel individual score lines. Left a very, very coarse cut. We want to smooth it out. Smoothing it means that this piston will seal better, thus giving you more suction. It means that this piston will last longer, so you don't have to replace the pump quite as often. And it means that it will dramatically lessen the chances of inverting this gasket while you're using it, again, saving your pump. I'm just using a, a brush because, again, I don't want the, the big mess. This has to be wet. You can get a cheap engine home at Harbor Freight. You could also probably rent one, stand above it, crush the stones down, slip them inside. This drill is going to be loud, but this does take some horsepower. You see the shiny spots? Those are the high spots. You see the gray spots? Those are the low spots. The shiny spots are the ones that have already been polished off. So, all oh, this is working so nice. Gosh, I was hoping, when I read those comments, I thought to myself, I wonder if an engine hone would work. And it does appear that an engine hone is working perfectly. We need to get in there and do that at least one more time. Again, you gotta find that balance between taking too much and taking too little. But yeah, perfect. With the pump bore out in the light, you can really see, see those dark bands down in there? And that vertical casting line. You can really see the casting flaws and the cutting flaws, but uh, it's far from perfect, but it is light years ahead of where we started. And that bore is nice and smooth. So I'm gonna follow my own advice, wipe it down with a little bit of olive oil, just to keep this in check while we're working on it, and put it back together. That'll make a tremendous difference in both longevity, reliability, and suction. That simple step. Now that we got the pump bore squared away, there are other places to find some efficiency. So take your piston. It should somehow come apart. This one happens to unscrew right here. Before you put it back together, by the way, I would put some sort of grease or even butter on these threads to help them not rust together in one piece. Looking for some efficiencies. This is that one-way valve. So this goes together like so. And as the pump moves down, this pops up. Water in the pump itself rush past out and around into the main pump body. When you move the piston back up, it drops down. Water can't get through. Water must then come out and go out the spout. So if there is any leaking between these two, that is a location that you are going to lose some pumping efficiency. You're going to lose some water. So we want to try to smooth these two out and get a good mating surface face. Also, turbulence. Now we're getting down to nitty pitty stuff, but this is badly cast, meaning it's got a lot of lumps and it's not very smooth and so on and so forth. As is this basket here. You've got a lot of what's called flashing hanging over. If you take a file and clean these up, you will provide a greater location for that water to come out I don't know how much smoothing these flashings 
and cleaning these mating surfaces and smoothing up their rough spots will actually improve your water pumping efficiency. But I do know, if you've taken the time to hone the inside of your barrel, why don't you take the time to clean this up? Anything will make it better. I'm going to go ahead and clean these up. You might try a Dremel tool. I'm going to try just a regular file to begin with. I'm going to try to sand these two surfaces so they mate a little better. I just wanted to stop partway through machining this with my kiddo, and I'm doing it with a uh, very worn out belt sander uh, on my big flat sander, and I'm just lightly touching it, and you rotate it and touch it, rotate it, touch it, rotate it, touch it. You do not want to take any of your material out. But right there, you can clearly see a machining flaw, and that would have been an opening for water to squirt out from between the two of them. So I'm going to take it just down until I've got a good silver ring all the way around. This process here is called lapping. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of the grit from when we resurface the inside of the bore with the hone uh, that's just a little bit of the, the grit that collects up on the blades, rock from the hones themselves, and cast iron chunks. And I added a little bit of water, and now we're just back and forth with a fair bit of pressure. And what this is doing is much like fitting a glass stopper to a jar. We're making these two faces mate with each other. Precisely. You'll want to see that sort of gray. That means that you're actually getting some grinding done. This could potentially have a, a serious impact on how much water you move. If you've got a, a bad check valve inside. Yeah, that's looking pretty darn good. Alright, so going through this. You can see how I took the Dremel out and I removed all the flashing and polished all of these ports right here to help that water flow through. I also took and gave a, a general polish to the outside faces, so it's not necessary, and a polish to the inside. I cleaned up the burrs on the shaft just a little bit because they bothered me. On the base seal, we did quite a bit of work to this. First, I polished the inside of the cup because water's got to flow through there smoothly. This polishing on the top face has no effect, really. And then I polished and then lapped. You see that dark gray line? That's the lap line, and that is from lapping the two of them so that they fit together perfectly. And I now know that I will have a good seal all the way around. I took and enlarged this opening here slightly, but remember, it's pi r squared, so even a small improvement there translates to a tremendous increase in surface area. So uh, you don't want to open it enough that this edge hangs over the side. So, Because I don't want it to sit in there crooked, that'll defeat the whole purpose. But when it's assembled into the piston, this thing cannot get off to the side. If you went much larger, there's potential, you know, and it doesn't matter if it seals over here or if it seals back here, just as long as it seals. So this gives us more water pass through and having them lap together uh, gives us a better seal. And that's important. That's water moving up the column. And then because the water flows around this like a bullet, I took and polished and rounded off the end of this a little bit just to uh, help that fluid move smoothly. So the reassembly. Got our rubber cup, goes on right there. This goes into here, the two of them together. So again, as this piston moves down, the bore is full of water, this rises up, the water pours out, filling the bore as you hit the bottom of your stroke and come up, this has to drop down, it then seals, and all the water above the piston goes out the spout, while the seal pulls more up from the bottom. 
And that's what we've just worked on there. So this unit now has a much better seal and it should flow water quite a bit better. Anything to help move water out the spout. Moving to the base, there's not really a whole lot of room for improvement right there. You're not, you're not going to have any performance effect. Again, this just sits in here, bore sits on top, and this is the drain black or bleed back valve. So it's held closed by the weight of the water trying to suck it closed, and then as you pump up, you suck water past it. You just, you're not going to affect that really at all. And uh, short of maybe putting a larger washer right there, help keep this from tearing, there's nothing to do here. There's no performance to be gained, really, messing with this. It'll purely be an aesthetics thing. So you certainly can clean it up, but uh, you're not going to gain anything. Now that this unit is all complete, I'm going to take it back apart. And I'm going to go paint it. Take the rubber off, screw it back together because you don't, you don't really need any paint on those threads. And I'm going to go paint this up just to help maybe keep it uh, from rusting. Here's our new and improved piston, all put back together and painted. All we need to do now is reassemble the unit. Piston goes back in. This is that flapper valve. I've gone ahead and wiped it down with a little bit of Wesson oil. Something that's food safe because it'll be some time before I get this thing on top of the well. Watch over tightening these bolts when you put it back down. You want to snug them up evenly. It is cast iron. It doesn't bend, it breaks. Nice. There's actually some suction with that polished bore and that little bit of Wesson oil in there. There's already suction in there. So we put it back together. like a completely different unit and that is how you tune one up that thing is going to pump much better than it was before it will pump more water it'll hold water better when you want it to it'll pull water from deeper basically you just turned a $39 horribly cast Chinese borderline yard ornament into a functional yard hydrant if you haven't already subscribed, you might want to, because the next step is to go out and dig our well. And we're going to do it ourselves, and we're going to do it for a grand total of less than $200. So you can't beat that. If you're interested in that, you want to make sure you've got us subscribed so you can check in when we start the action.